So guys, INEC is messing up with the wrong generation. Every day, INEC is displaying a new drama. Every day. You can see what is stated here. INEC wipes off results of presidential election in Beavers. My people, this is what we came up to see. This is one of the latest developments. This person said, Daylight robbery exposed as Mahmoud and INEC manipulates FCT results on the IRF. INEC restricted people from viewing Abuja results and now they are deducting Labour Party votes and adding some to APC. Hmm. To criminally give Tinubu and APC 25%. Oh my God. Has INEC forgotten that Nigerians all have the results that we got on the 25th of February 2023? So guys, this is what is happening. Sometimes it appears these people have really lost their conscience. How could they be doing this at this time when every issue, even all the evidence are already before the court? They are now deducting Peter Obi's number of votes and adding it to the APC. Fellow Nigerians, this is what we are seeing. You can see it for yourself. This is what we are seeing. Remember how they were arguing that Anne is not important when it comes to FCT being included. They said, and the 25% for FCT. Some of them were saying that it is not important. Now they are going to steal Peter Obi's vote and adding it to the APC. Fellow Nigerians, this is what is happening. You can see that the INEC chairman is not even regretting what he did. Honestly, he doesn't have any regret of what happened during this election. If, if INEC can still be going this far, then it really means something is wrong. Something is really wrong. So guys, you can see it for yourself. This is what we are seeing on the social media. You can see how they are deducting Peter Obi's vote. This image shows you that Peter Obi, that's the Labour Party, got 63%. This is the original copy of what the result was like from the beginning. But now they've deducted it to 58%. You see, while the APC that had 20% now has 23%, and don't be surprised, in a short moment, APC will climb to 25%, while Peter Obi's own will keep sliding. So this is the new strategy. You can see this is the original, and this one is the fake one. You can see what they are doing. This is it, but you know, they are being exposed. They are being exposed. They cannot execute it. So it appears Mahmoud is not even regretting all that the Nigerian people are going through as a result of this election that they handled wrongly they are not even regretting you know their mistake they are not from the look of things they don't show any regrets honestly so guys you can see it so guys we all know that the european union observation commission has come out to you know indict INEC that they did not do the right thing there was no transparency let me just allow you to listen to a very short clip of one of the things that they stated the introduction of the bimodal voter accreditation system or bvas and the INEC results viewing plat portal IREV was widely seen as an important step to ensure the integrity and credibility of the elections. But lack of transparency before the polls and notably the severe de severely delayed display of presidential result forms on the 25th of February for which INEC failed to give a timely and comprehensive explanation dashed the public trust in election technologies and in INEC. For both elections, INEC did not publish key relevant information, hampering transparency throughout the collation processes and the declaration of election results. For example, INEC failed to publish the manner of calculation of the declared winners, turnouts, number of accredited voters, and the list of polling units where elections were cancelled, postponed, or not held. The absence of this information undermined the possibility for independent verification of the outcome and public trust. We consider it vital, and this is our final priority recommendation, to protect the free expression of the will of the voter and integrity. So guys, after this press conference, listen to how Festus Okoye reacted. You know, Mahmoud was even not there. He was there to just receive the report. And it was shocking to see that he left the venue, maybe very early. Because at the end of the day, it was Festus Okoye that, re that responded. But let me allow you to listen to what Festus Okoye said. To judge the entire performance of the commission, 
on the basis of glitch in result upload for the presidential election. You heard the European uh, uh, mission say, the European observation mission, say that there were substantial and significant and fundamental improvements in the conduct of the governorship and state assembly elections. That is a positive sign. Nobody has also faulted the conduct of the senatorial and uh, House of Representatives elections. That is, for me, is, is, is also a positive sign. Now, but we must also recognize the fact that the law, the law itself, has also given the political parties the opportunity to know what goes on at each polling unit. Almost all the political parties, or the at least five of the political parties, nominated and got accredited over 170,000 pooling agents. So what that means is that they had primary evidence of the results from the pooling units. And it is those results from the pooling units. So and it cannot be correct for a political party to rely only on result upload in order to get the evidence with which he wants to prosecute uh, his case in court. But as I say, we have uh, cases in court, petitions are already in court. Let the court make a determination of whether the commission did well or the commission did not do well. As far as we are concerned, we are going to present our report, our, our, uh, we, are, we are going to make our submissions to the court, we are going to present what we know and what we did during the elections to the presidential election petition tribunal and all the other election petition tribunals, and then they will make a determination on uh, uh, going forward. But as far as the commission is concerned, there were so many positives to this election. There were also significant challenges and problems with the election. We are going to address those, those uh, uh, challenges and those, and those problems. And if, there are, if we receive most of the reports from the domestic and international observers, we will harmonize them, take out the actionable ones that have administrative level. We will implement them. If there are still challenges with the electoral act 2022 um, and the constitutional framework, we will also join Nigeria and go before the National Assembly to get both the constitutional and legal framework uh, amended. But let me say this, that as Nigerians, we must have faith in our democratic institutions, we must have faith in our democracy, and we must continue to work on our democracy because the electoral process and democracy uh, 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 we keep on improving. It, there is no country in the world that can say it has a perfect democracy. No. You have to grow it, you have to nurture it, and you have to keep on nurturing it. Challenges will emerge, but the robustness of the institutions will determine how strong a democracy is, and that is my opinion. As a commission, we have no illusion that it is going to be easy to root out the negative influence of money on our elections, but we are determined to tackle the problem. We fully realize that today's initiative will not go down well with people who may not be committed to the growth of our electoral system and the consolidation of our democracy. We, have, we expect them to fight back. There will be both covert and overt pressure, countervailing actions, and even threats by vested interests. I wish to reiterate that our loyalty is to Nigeria and our allegiance is to Nigerians. We are committed to working with the collaborating agencies to see that this initiative succeeds in the 2023 general election and beyond. Let me similarly reiterate the Commission's resolve to continue to employ both technology and administrative measures to strengthen Nigeria's electoral process. I assure Nigerians that preparation for the 2023 general election is on course and we shall not be swayed from that course. Be, be assured that the beavers has come to stay. Electronic transmission of results has come to stay. Public display of polling unit results through IREV has come to stay. With today's initiative, the elimination of the negative use of money in our electoral process will be tackled head on. Once again, I would like to appreciate the Nigeria police and other security and safety agencies, the ICPC, the EFCC, the MBC, and ACON for their support 
and partnership. I would similarly like to appreciate the Nigeria Financial Intelligence Unit, the Broadcasting Organization of Nigeria, the Newspaper Proprietors Association of Nigeria, political parties, civil society organizations, trade unions, professional bodies, financial institutions, and all our invited guests for honoring our invitation and for standing by INEC in our shared commitment to credit.